Our first mate, Mr. Arrow, quickly lost the respect of the men. After a day or two at sea, he began to appear drunk on deck with hazy eyes and red cheeks. Sometimes he fell and cut himself. Sometimes he lay all day long in his little bunk. We could never make out where he got the drink. When we asked him to his face, he would either laugh or deny that he ever tasted anything but water. He was useless as an officer and a bad influence amongst the men. Nobody was much surprised, nor very sorry, when one dark night, with a rough sea, he disappeared entirely. He was seen no more. Overboard, said the captain. Well, gentlemen, that saves us the trouble of putting him in irons. Long John Silver, or barbecue, as the men called him, was our cook. Aboard ship, he managed to keep perfect balance while cooking or crossing the deck in the heaviest of weather. He could move with his crutch as quickly as another man could walk. All the crew respected and obeyed him. He's no common man, barbecue, said one to me. He had good schooling in his young days and can speak like a book when so minded. And he's brave. I have seen him fight for them, unarmed. Silver instinctively knew the best way to deal with each crew member. To me, he was unfailingly kind. Long John was always glad to see me in the galley which he kept spotlessly clean. Come away, Hawkins, he would say. Come and talk to John. Nobody is more welcome than you, my son. Sit you down here with Captain Flint. The parrot sat in a cage in the corner. I call him Captain Flint after the famous buccaneer. Flint thinks we'll find our treasure, don't you, Captain? And the parrot would say, Not everyone on board got on. The squire and the captain despised each other. One day the captain said, This crew is, is better than I expected. The ship too. But I still don't like this voyage. At this, the squire turned away and marched up and down the deck, chin in the air. Any more of that man, he said, and I shall explode. We had some heavy weather, which the Hispaniola handled well. The crew seemed contented, which did not surprise me. There was double grog for them, and there was a barrel of apples they could help themselves to on deck. The captain did not approve. Spoil the man, and you make devils, he said. But good did come of the apple barrel, as I shall explain. One evening, just after sundown, I went onto the deck to get an apple. The only other man there was at the far end. He was looking out for the island while whistling away gently to himself. The only other sound was the swish of the sea around the sides of the ship. There were almost no apples left, so I climbed into the barrel to search at the bottom. Once inside, I was so tired that I sat down there in the dark. It was very restful with the sound of waters and the rocking movement of the ship. I think I was drifting off to sleep when a heavy man sat down close by. The barrel shook as he leaned his shoulders against it. Before I could jump up, the man began to speak. It was Silver's voice I heard as I lay there trembling. 
He only said a dozen words, but they meant that the lives of all the honest men aboard now depended upon me alone. <laughs>